happy day students welcome to san academy group of schools palikarne grade 9 biology and today's topic for discussion is chapter 6 tissues and this topic we will be discussing in two parts and in the first part we will be discussing about plant tissues in detail now come on let us get into the topic we all know that the living organisms are made up of cells and on the basis of number of cells these are classified as unicellular and multicellular and these cells originate from a single cell by repeated divisions and gets differentiated during the development and in multicellular organisms different functions are performed by different group of cells and these group of cells which have specific structure position and function are called as what come on let us look into the answer and they are called as tissues so tissues are nothing but the group of cells which have specific structure position and function and these group of cells having a common origin and perform similar functions are called tissues now let us have a brief look about the biological level of organization we all know cell is nothing but a small unit of living things and when these cells are grouped together that two which are performing the similar function it is called as tissues and when the group of tissues which are going to perform specific function in an organisms are grouped together it is called as organ when a group of organs are functioning together it makes up the organ system all organ systems organize together that is they function together in relation with each other in order to compose an organism which can be an animal or a plant now can you see this picture you can see an animal which is moving but are the trees in the forest is it possible for the trees to move from place to place and you may be a little puzzled why mam is asking this question because based on the answer for this question only you are going to understand the concept why plants and animals are made up of different types of tissues come on let us see the reason why plants and animals are made up of different type of tissues and we know that plants and animals have similar life process but they are entirely different type of organism they have different body structure which are specialized to perform various functions and due to difference in their structure and function their body tissues are also different and the important parameter or the characteristic of these two organisms which is making the difference in the type of tissue out of which they are made is plants are stationary that is they are fixed at a definite place whereas animals move from place to place in order to search food and shelter whereas plants they are autotrophic and they prepare their own food with the help of carbon dioxide and sunlight through photosynthesis and they remain in the same place come on let us discuss the difference between the plant and animal tissue in a broad spectrum as you can see plants do not move from place to place whereas animals move from place to place and need more energy than plants whereas in case of plant tissues tissues consist of dead cells because they provide mechanical support and strength to the plant we all know that plants are going to remain in the same place so they have to be strong enough in order to face any type of unfavorable environmental threats and for that they need more amount of mechanical strength 
and support and that is being provided by the dead cells. Hence, plant tissues consist of dead cells, whereas cells and tissues in animals are living cells. The growth of plant take place only in some region. In case of animals, the growth of animal is more uniform. And in case of plant tissues, they have tissues called meristematic tissues, which divide and help in the growth of plant. Whereas animals do not have any separate type of tissue such as dividing and non-dividing cells. Similarly, cells come together to form tissue which in turn form organ which performs specific function. Whereas in case of plant tissues, they also have another type of tissue called permanent tissue which do not divide after the differentiation has occurred. In this slide, let us discuss about the classification of plant tissue. Plant tissue is broadly classified into two types, which is meristematic tissues and permanent tissues. And what are meristematic tissues? Those tissues which can divide continuously are called meristematic tissues. Whereas permanent tissues are the type of tissues which after differentiation, they do not divide continually. That is the division of the cells in case of permanent tissue gets stopped. Now let us look into the detailed classification of plant tissues. And plant tissues are broadly classified into meristematic tissues and permanent tissues. And these meristematic tissues are made up of cells which are capable of cell division, whereas permanent tissues are made up of mature cells which are incapable of cell division. And the permanent tissue is further classified into two types. And one is simple permanent tissue and the other is complex permanent tissue. And let us see the classification of simple permanent tissues. And they are epidermis, parenchyma, colenchyma and sclerenchyma. And the simple permanent tissues are mainly going to support, that is give the mechanical strength and support to the plant. Coming to complex permanent tissues, they are made up of more than one cell type. And the two types of complex permanent tissues are xylem and phloem. And these are also called as conducting tissues because they play an important role in conducting water and minerals as well as the food prepared by the leaves to all the parts of the plant. Meristematic tissues and as I told you, the group of living cells with the ability to divide repeatedly and form new cell is called meristematic tissues. And do you all know that growth of plants occur only in certain specific region? And these meristematic tissues are found in this growth region of plant. That is the region of plant that grows like tip of the stem and root. This is because the division tissue, that is the dividing tissue, which is also known as meristematic tissue, is found only in the tip of the shoot as well as in the root tips. And it is also found in the central part also, which is called as lateral meristem and intercalary meristem. Whereas the meristem that is found on the tip of the shoot and the tip of the root are called apical meristem, which we will be discussing in detail in the due course of time. And this word meristem is actually derived from a Greek word called meristos, which means divided and these meristematic tissues are made up of unspecialized cells which can be divided indefinitely to produce new cells and undergo differentiation. What does the word meristem means? Meristem is nothing but the region where the meristematic cells are present and the meristem is exclusively found on the tip of the shoot and on the tip of the root and it is called as apical meristem. 
Now, let us discuss in detail about the general characteristics of meristematic tissues. And these meristematic tissues, based upon the location where they are found, they are classified into three types, which we will be discussing under the topic types of meristematic tissues. Now, coming back to the general characteristics of meristematic tissues. Meristematic tissues are usually found at the apex of the root and shoot, that is on the tip of the shoot and the tip of the root, which helps the plant to grow lengthwise. And the cells that are forming the meristematic tissues are called meristematic cells, which have the ability to divide continuously and to undergo differentiation in order to form the cells of permanent tissues. And meristematic cells divide continuously and thus they help in increasing the length and the thickness of the plant. And the meristem which helps in increasing the thickness of the plant is called lateral meristem. Initially, the meristematic cells, all the meristematic cells are similar, but in due course of time, they grow, differentiate and mature into various permanent tissues, after which the cells cannot undergo any division. Let us discuss about the characteristic features of meristematic cells. And these meristematic cells are found in which region? The meristematic tissues or in the meristems. And what are the characteristics of the meristematic cells? These meristematic cells can be either round, oval, polygonal or rectangular in shape. And when you observe the picture, you can see they are made up of very thin wall. And these walls are quite elastic and it is made up of cellulose. As we all know, meristematic cells are nothing but a plant cell. And we know that the cell wall of all the type of plant cells are made up of cellulose. And they are so closely arranged that they do not have any intercellular space or the intercellular space is completely absent. And they have a very dense or very highly packed cytoplasm with a large nucleus in the center. With respect to vacuoles, the protoplasm of meristematic cells do not have vacuoles or even if they have, they have it in a very, very small size. And the most important characteristic of this cells are they have the ability to divide repeatedly, that is continuously. Now let us discuss about the classification of meristematic tissues based on their position. Based upon the position or the region where these meristematic tissues are found, it is classified into three types and the meristematic tissues which are found at the tip of the shoot are called as apical meristem. Let me repeat it for you. The meristematic tissues which are found at the tip of the shoot are called apical meristem and the meristematic tissues which are found in the nodal regions are called intercalary meristems. Let me repeat it for you. They are called as intercalary meristems. Whereas the meristematic tissues which are found at the sides of the stem are called lateral meristems. And this apical meristem helps in increasing the length of the plant both upward and downward. So the main role or function of apical meristem is helps in increasing the length of the plant. And the main function of intercalary meristem is it helps in elongation of plant. It helps in elongation of plant whereas the lateral meristem helps in increasing the 
thickness of the plant. It increases the thickness of the plant. So, let us have a quick recap of the three types of meristems. As you can see here, apical meristems, it is found mostly in the tips of the stems and roots. And the function is it helps in growth and increases the length at tips. Intercalary meristem, they are found between the tip and the base of the stem and leaf, which is called nodes. And they also help in growth and increasing the length between the nodes, which means they help in elongation of plants. And lateral meristems, they are found on the sides of the stems and roots. And they also help in growth by increasing the diameter, that is by increasing the thickness of the stem. Now let us discuss about a uh, compare and contrast of apical versus lateral meristem. And you can see the apical meristems at the tip of the shoot and at the root tips. And those apical meristems which are found at the tip of the shoot are called as shoot apical meristem. And those apical meristems which are found at the root tips are called root apical meristem and both the apical meristem they cause the primary growth of the plant that is they help in lengthening of plant and they are found mostly in the tip of the shoot and roots and they produce new leaves and flowers whereas lateral meristem this meristematic tissue which is found at the sides of the stem are called as lateral meristem and they help in increasing the thickness of the plant and they cause the secondary growth that is the widening of plant and it occurs at the cambium and produces barks on the tree. Always remember Apical meristem helps in formation of new leaves and flowers, whereas lateral meristem helps in the formation of barks on trees. Now, let us discuss about intercalary meristem in detail. And intercalary meristems are mostly found in the regions of nodes. That is, they are found at the nodes and they help in elongation of the plants. They are present at the basis of the leaves and the basis of the internodal region in plants such as grasses. These help in elongation of internodes. And it also helps in the longitudinal growth of the plant. And in grasses, it is only because of these intercalary meristems, the grass gets regenerated, which is being removed by grazing of herbivores. That is, we know that whenever a herbivore animal is eating up the grass, after a few days, we can see the regrowth of the grass. And this regrowth of the grass is mainly happening because of the intercalary meristems. Now, let us start our discussion with permanent plant tissues. And permanent plant tissues are the group of cells formed by meristematic tissues, which are fixed at a permanent position and have lost the ability to divide in plant body and they are called as permanent tissues. And the process of taking up a permanent specific shape, size and function by a mass of cell is called differentiation. That is when the meristematic cells are going to take up a permanent specific shape and size and function in order to produce the cells that are going to make up the permanent plant tissues and that process is called as differentiation. 
let us discuss about permanent tissues in detail. The characteristics of permanent tissues. There are different type of permanent tissues and this permanent tissues are generally classified into simple and complex permanent tissues which we will be discussing in due course of time. And few examples of permanent tissues are parenchyma tissues and you can see cholenchyma and sclerenchyma. And this permanent tissues provide both mechanical support to the plant as well as they also act as a conducting tissue. And the permanent tissue generally consists of mature cells which have a definite shape, size and function and which has lost their ability of dividing repeatedly or continuous differentiation and these cells do not possess the ability to divide as I told you now and they may be living vacuolated or dead cells. In case of living and vacuolated cells mainly help in conducting the materials across the plant whereas the dead cells play an important role in providing the mechanical support and strength to the plant. Now let us discuss about the classification of permanent tissues. Permanent tissues are classified into two types, simple permanent tissue and complex permanent tissue. Whereas simple permanent tissues are made up of one type of cell, whereas complex permanent tissues are made up of more than one type of cells. And simple permanent tissues are further classified into parenchyma, cholenchyma and sclerenchyma. Whereas complex permanent tissues are classified into xylem and phloem. Now let us discuss about the simple permanent tissue that do about supporting tissues. You all may be surprised why it has been written as supporting tissues because Simple permanent tissues are broadly classified into two groups based upon the functions they perform. One set of tissues provides support, mechanical support to the plant. There is one set of simple permanent tissues, they give protection to the plant. And first we are going to discuss about the simple permanent tissues that is supporting tissues and the different types of simple permanent tissues which are performing the supporting functions are parenchyma tissues, cholenchyma tissues and sclerenchyma tissues and all the three type of tissues helps in supporting the survival of plant. Let us discuss about parenchyma tissue in detail. The word parenchyma is actually derived from a Greek word in which the word para means beside and enchyma means in filling. And in this picture you can see the typical structure of a parenchyma tissue. Now let us discuss about the general characteristics of parenchyma tissue. The parenchyma tissue is the most simplest form of tissue and it is primitive that is it is not well developed tissue and it is found in the most abundant amount among the various type of plant tissues. And the cells that are making up of parenchyma tissues as you can see in the picture they are oval in shape or cylindrical or it can be even isodiametric. The word isodiametric means that the cell has been expanded in an equal amount on all the sides. And as you can see clearly in this picture, there are abundant amount of intercellular space. As you can see here, between these three cells, you have abundant amount of what? Intercellular space and the cells have cell wall which is very thin and it is made up of nucleus and they have a very small nucleus but whereas large sized vacuoles. As you can see over here the size of the vacuole is very big compared to the size of the nucleus and as a result of which the nucleus is pushed towards the 
periphery of the cell and the vacuole is occupying the central region of the cell. What are the functions of parenchyma tissues? And these parenchyma tissues play an important role in serving as a packaging tissues. They also provide the primary support to the plant. They also store and assimilate the food and they allow gaseous exchanges to happen. And if chloroplast is present, then that particular parenchyma tissue is called as chlorenchyma, which is understood it helps in photosynthesis also. Now let us discuss in detail about cholenchyma tissues. The word cholenchyma is derived from a Greek word. Chola means glue and enchyma means an infusion. And this is the picture of cholenchyma tissue that do the transverse section. And as you can observe in the picture, the walls of the cell are very thick and the vacuoles are even more bigger than what it was seen in parenchyma tissues and the cytoplasms are very thin and the nucleus is smaller in size. Now let us discuss about the general characteristics. The cholenchyma tissues are generally a living tissue and the, the walls that is the wall that is making up or lining the cholenchyma cells are very thin and they are compactly arranged because of which the intercellular space is completely absent and these cells are elongated in shape and they are mostly found below the epidermis of the leaf, stalk, leaf midrib and petiole. And they give an exclusive mechanical support as well as the elasticity. Now let us discuss about the functions of cholenchyma tissues. And these cholenchyma tissues act as a chief supporting tissues. That is, they are the chief supporting tissues. And apart from that, they also provide mechanical support, elasticity and tensile strength. And it is only because of this elasticity and tensile strength that how much or how strong the wind is blowing, the plants are not getting broken off easily. They are bending down and again after the stop of the wind current, they resume to their original position. And it also provides flexibility only with the help of which during the strong wind current the plants are remaining stable though they are moving or bending down and they prevent the tearing of leaf by the effect of wind. Now let us discuss about sclerenchyma tissues. Among the three type of supporting tissues the sclerenchyma tissue is a dead tissue. The word sclerenchyma is derived from a Greek word scleros which means hard and enchyma means an infusion or filling. And let us look into the structure of a sclerenchyma tissues and the walls that are making up the sclerenchyma cells are very very thick. The general characteristics of sclerenchyma tissues are they are made up of dead cells which are thick walled and narrow and the cell wall is thick and impermeable to water that is they do not allow water either to pass in or pass out and the intercellular space is completely absent with respect to sclerenchyma tissues. Now, let us discuss about the occurrence that is where the sclerenchyma tissues are found. They are found mostly in the hard covering of seeds and nuts. That is the hard covering of the seeds and nuts, whatever we are eating or consuming is nothing but the sclerenchyma tissues, which play an important role in protecting the inner components of the seeds and nuts. Even the husk of coconut is made up of sclerenchymatous tissue which yields coir, the well-known fiber. And the functions 
of sclerenchyma tissue is they provide mechanical support as well as they play an important role in protecting the inner content of the plant and the sclerenchyma fibers generally have a very good commercial value out of which various products have been made now let us discuss about simple permanent tissue the protective tissues the protective tissues generally consist of an outermost layer of cell which covers the part of the plant like root stem leaf and fruit and they protect the plant from the adverse environmental conditions and the two types of protective tissues are epidermis and cork let us discuss in detail about the characteristics of epidermis the word epidermis is derived from a greek word in which epi means upon and derma means skin and here you can see the picture of an epidermis tissue and this epidermis tissue is the outermost layer of plant organ and mostly the leaves stems flowers and roots are covered by epidermis and it is usually a single layered structure but in some plants the leaves have more than one layer of epidermis and the surface of epidermis is always covered by a substance called cuticle and this cuticle is a waxy waterproof layer which is formed by the cutin and it is secreted by the epidermal cell now let us discuss about the functions of epidermis the main functions of epidermis are they provide protection to the plant and prevent the cell from damage and infection and they also prevent loss of water which is done exclusively by cuticle and they help in exchange of gases and this function of exchange of gases is possible by the presence of stomata which is found on the epidermis now let us discuss in detail about the second protective permanent tissue that is cork and as plants grow older the epidermis undergoes changes and as a result of which a layer of secondary meristem replaces the epidermis which is called as cork cambium as you can see over here this innermost part is called as cork cambium and the cells that are making up of the cork are rectangular and they are vacuolated that is they have a big sized vacuole and they are dead cells and they completely lack intercellular space and they consist of deposition of a substance called suberin makes the cork impermeable to water and gases and this cork is used in making insulating materials sports good etc and always remember it is the presence of suberin which is making the cork impermeable to water and gases now we are going to discuss about complex permanent tissues a tissue which is having one or more type of cell which have a common origin and which work together as a unit to perform a common function is called complex permanent tissues and these complex tissues are mostly related with transportation of water mineral nutrients and organic solutes and already you all would have learned in your lower classes the two types of tissues in plants which are helping in conducting the water and the food materials prepared by the leaves are nothing but xylem and phloem and this xylem is also called as wood and phloem is also called as bast and we are going to learn in detail about these two type of tissues only under the heading complex permanent tissues so the complex permanent tissues are of two types one is xylem and the other is phloem and in this xylem helps in conducting the water from the roots 
above to all the parts of the plant whereas phloem helps in conducting the food materials prepared by the leaves to all the parts of the plant and xylem and phloem are generally called as conducting tissues because xylem plays an important role in transporting the water and minerals upward to all the parts of the plant and whereas the phloem acts as a conducting tissue in transporting the food prepared by the leaf to all the parts of the plant now let us discuss in detail about xylem and xylem is made up of four type of cells and they are xylem vessels xylem tracheids xylem fibers and xylem parenchyma now let us look in detail about the various components of xylem and first let us start our discussion with xylem tracheids and these tracheids are elongated tubular dead cells with tapering ends and the end walls have broader pits as you can see the walls of the tracheids are having broader pits and the walls of tracheids are thick and hard due to the deposition of lignin and they mainly conduct water and gives mechanical support to the cell now let us discuss about xylem vessels the vessels are short lumens and they are wide when they are compared with tracheids and the cells are placed upon one upon another and form a tube like structure due to partial or complete dissolution and the end walls have perforations and vessels are mainly found in angiosperms but are completely absent in gymnosperms and they mainly conduct water and mineral now let us discuss about xylem fibers and these xylem fibers are long narrow tapering and made up of sclerenchyma cells hope you would have guessed out among the various component of xylem the xylem fiber fibers is a dead component and they have thick pit, pitted walls and narrow lumen and they provide mechanical strength to the body among the three vessels which we have discussed now even the xylem tracheid xylem vessels and xylem fibers are made up of dead cells whereas the next component of the xylem that is xylem parenchyma is made up of parenchyma cells and it is the only living component of xylem vessels and they mainly store food and also help in lateral conduction of water Now let us discuss about phloem. Phloem is derived from a Greek word phloes which means inner bark and it is the second complex permanent tissue which is found in the plants and it is also called as the living conductive tissues. Living what? Conductive tissues because it is going to conduct the food materials prepared by the leaf to all the parts of the plant and hence we can say that phloem plays an important role in translocation process what does the word translocation means translocation is a process in which the food prepared by the leaf is being transported to different parts of the plant and that process is possible only with the help of phloem tissues and like xylem phloem is also made up of more than one type of cells and the various type of cells that are making up the phloems or the four elements of phloem are seed plates sieve tubes companion cell and phloem parenchyma now let us discuss about the phloem components in detail first we are going to discuss about phloem parenchyma and this is a living component of the 
phloem and it is thin wall and it is made up of living parenchyma cells which is present in the phloem and are called as phloem parenchyma now we will discuss about phloem fibers which are also called as bast fibers phloem fibers are also called as bast fibers and they are made up of dead cells and they are thick walled and elongated and it is sclerenchymatous in nature that is the sclerenchymatic cells of phloem are generally called as phloem fibers and they provide mechanical strength to the plant so among the components what we have discussed so far phloem parenchyma is a living component there is phloem fiber is a dead component now let us discuss about the next component of phloem which is seed cells or which makes the seed tubes and it consists of thin walled elongated cells and it is placed one over the other forming a continuous tube like structure and the end walls of adjust adjoining sieve tube cells are performed and are called sieve plates and the cytoplasm of one sieve tube element is continuous with the adjacent sieve tube cells through the pores that are present in sieve plates but these mature sieve cells do not have nucleus but they remain live due to the dependence of adjacent companion cells hence the sieve tube cells or the sieve cells are also the living component of phloem now let us discuss about the last element of phloem or component of phloem which is companion cells they are usually associated with sieve tube cells and are living cells and these are made up of thin wall and are smaller in size and they have dense cytoplasm and they are quite elongated and they have a large nucleus inside them and the, because of the presence of nucleus it is also a living component of phloem and it is only the companion cells which is making the sieve cells to be living cell because the nucleus of the companion cell will be controlling the functions or will be passing the instructions even to the sieve cells so from this you can observe that among the four components phloem parenchyma is a living component sieve cells are a living component companion cells are a living component and only phloem fibers are a dead component of phloem tissue and hence majority of the components are made up of living cells phloem is generally called as living conducting tissue and as you can see in this picture xylem vessels will allow the movement of water and mineral only in upward direction so we can say the movement of water and mineral through xylem vessels are unidirectional it is unidirectional whereas in case of phloem the food prepared by the leaf is moving both upward and downward so the movement of materials across the phloem vessels are bidirectional now let us have a quick compare and contrast between xylem and phloem xylem is a vascular tissue that transports water and mineral from roots to the leaves and it is also called as water conducting tissues whereas phloem it's again a vascular tissue but transports organic nutrients such as sugar that is the food prepared by the leaf to all the parts of the plant including the roots and from mature leaves to the new leaves hence it is called as food conducting tissue of the plant and in gymnosperms xylem consists of cells called 
truckets whereas in angiosperms they consist of two cells truckets and vessel elements whereas two types of phloem cells c tube elements and companion cells are present and the xylem it is made up of tube shaped cells that contain a tough material called lignin and which helps in fortification of xylem tissues that is protecting the xylem tissues and that is done mainly with the help of what with lignin component and it allows the trees to grow larger height and the living content in both cells are die when they mature whereas in case of phloem they are made up of living cells arranged in tubular form both cells are alive even after maturity and the c tube elements have no nuclei the common point between xylem and phloem is both are vascular tissues and they make the internal system of tubes that run lengthwise throughout the plants that is they are nothing but the internal system of tubes which are running throughout the plants and helping in carrying the water and minerals as well as the organic nutrients that is the food prepared from the leaf to all the parts of the plant thank you students